Hey y'all, welcome back to the burrow. I'm Hillary, your resident fragrance loving muggle. So you might have noticed that we're in kind of a weird location right now. Um, we are right on the edge of my grooming van. Um, so right now my business is shut down due to the, due to the quarantine. And um, you know, I'm not allowed to have normal business. However, a lot of my clients are asking for grooming tips to help maintain their pet's coats so their pets, you know, um, aren't in pain in between grooms. So I was going to make those videos for my business's Facebook page, but I realized that there are probably a lot of, um, of fragrance fanatics that also have pets and might be interested in some of these different tips and things. So I am going to be adding at the end of this little segment here, um, um, one of my videos that I filmed today for um, just nail trims, ears, paw pads, just the basics. Um, and um, hopefully I'll be doing some more of these in the future. And if there's any grooming specific things that you guys need some assistance with, just comment those in the discussions below and I'll see if I can't make a video about it for you guys. Um, in the meantime, um, my scent of the day today is going to be Pineapple by Gallagher Fragrances. Um, it's handy. You know, this thing has the notes on the front. Um, the notes are magnolia, green apple, um, pineapple, jasmine, dry woods, musk, and ambrette. This fragrance is a really beautiful, juicy pineapple fragrance. I put this on my spring list, and I said in that video that it is in no way related to Aventus, and, you know, that is completely true. This is a juicy pineapple fragrance with a background of some beautiful florals that give it this kind of wispy airy texture to it and when it dries down it kind of dries down to that nice clean musk but somehow the juiciness from the green apple and the pineapple do st like does still remain on your skin so this fragrance is happy it is uplifting perfect for these kind of trying times during this whole coronavirus situation. Um, yeah, this fragrance just makes me happy. So I'm just going to coat myself in it, I guess. <laughs> and um, yeah, so if you have not tried this fragrance, um, definitely get your nose on it. It is just a very easy to wear fragrance. It's perfect for the spring and summer. Um, it doesn't really have the strength or lasting power for um, for the fall and winter just because it doesn't have a ton of depth. You know, there's no like tonka or leather or anything like that in here but this is just a beautiful, uplifting fragrance that is sure to lift your spirits during this time. So um, yeah, I guess without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started on um, just some basic grooming tips. And if you guys aren't interested at all in those, just skip it, just ignore these videos, no big deal. Um, I'm just trying to, to help some people out and hopefully also help some pets out and make sure that they are comfortable and that they're not forgotten because um, honestly their care is essential and um, because they're essential to our families. So hope you guys have a great day and I hope everyone's staying healthy. And yep, I'll catch y'all in a bit. Bye. Hey Swag fans, Hillary here and Chris is behind the camera. Hi guys. So um, I brought my pupper dimples in because um, a lot of you have been asking for some tips on helping to maintain your pet's coat. Um, or just their nails, just general care. And I figured that I would show you today how to do nails, ears, and paw pads. So yeah, let's get started. So first off, we'll do ears. Um, one of the biggest things with ears is people don't know what they can safely clean their pet's ears with. Um, you can technically use alcohol, peroxide. However, I don't like to do either of those because alcohol can sting if there's a cut or irritation inside the ear. Um, peroxide, if there is a cut or irritation inside the ear, can um, remove healthy cells that are trying to rebuild. Um, so I prefer to use just good old fashioned um, witch hazel. So um, you can also use um, different ear cleaners that are specifically made for pets ears. Those are awesome, but I feel like most people are more likely to have witch hazel at home in their cabinets than they are to have um, ear cleaner if they're not used to having to clean their pets ears. So I'll show you how to do this. Okay. So we've got our cotton balls and we're just going to coat our cotton balls with witch hazel. So a pet's ear canal is shaped like an L. Um, technically we can safely reach in as far as possible within their ear and won't have to worry about injuring their eardrums. However, if you are new to cleaning your pet's ears, it is probably safest to only clean what you can see from looking in from the outside. Um, Dimples has very sensitive ears, so I don't usually reach very far into hers but I just pull the ear back, I flip it open, and just gently wipe inside. Good girl, Dimply-Doo. 
No shaman? And, yep, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> you want to do another one? Make sure that you're not pushing too hard because their ears have lots of little crevices and you don't want to, um, you don't want to rub up against it and just make it uncomfortable for them. Um, smaller dogs, you can use Q-tips. Um, just be really, really careful because, you know, Q-tips are much harder than a cotton ball and you might cause some sort of irritation in there if you push too hard. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So for paw pads, now for short coated dogs, it's not as big of a deal um, because they don't grow as much coat in their paw pad area. However, for a dog like a Havanese or a Shih Tzu or a Poodle, this is much more important because they can grow a lot of coat that can actually mat within the paw pads. But I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on dimples. Now um, we use a cordless uh, wall bravura, um, which is a five in one blade, so we can choose what length blade we wanna use. Paw pads are safe to be done with 10, 30, or 40 blades. Um, I will use a 40 on dimples and I usually use 40s. However, if you are not used to trimming paw pads, use a 10 and don't dig in. But we'll, I'll show you those in a second. Okay, so when you're doing paw pads, you need to lift their foot up and flip it back at the ankle. You don't want to yank their arm back because their arm is not meant to move in that direction. So if you just flip it up, clip her against the coat, and we are just getting anything that is blocking the paw pad from looking like a picture of a paw pad that you might draw. So notice how I'm not spreading it open and going in. Easy dimples. Yes, yeah, so I'm not spreading it open, leaving it closed, and just only getting what is blocking that perfect paw pad picture. And we'll do that on all four feet. Notice, especially on these back legs, Dimples is 10 years old, so I am not lifting that back leg up very far. I'm just barely lifting off the off the floor and then flipping the foot itself. Good girl. And the front foot. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna trim nails. Now I will show some basic trimming, but Dimples prefers grinding, so I will also show that. The way to tell where the quick is on a black nail is honestly the same as it is on a white nail. You should not be looking for the color of the quick through the nail because the quick will continue from the point where that color ends because as that vein narrows, it is no longer, there's no longer enough color to be seen through the nail, if that makes sense. So the best way to look is when you look at the nail, see how there's this flatness here on the underside? This nail needs to be in a straight line. So the straight line would be right here. So we're cutting off the tip. So just this area right here. Same here. So basically we are taking what's coming to a point to a blunt end. Now a lot of people are concerned that they might quick their nail. And if you don't know what quicking is, quicking means that you have cut the quick of the nail and so it bleeds a lot, unfortunately. Um, the best way to stop that is if you have styptic powder. Um, however, a lot of people don't have styptic powder at home, so you can use cornstarch, you can use flour, anything like that can help to clot a bleeding nail and they'll forget that it's, um, they'll kind of forget that it's bleeding fairly quickly. One of the other main goals when you're trimming nails is just to make sure that when the dog is standing naturally that their nails are not touching the floor or the table. So if you look you can see that I have a, a little bit of room between nail and table and that's how you know that when they stand that the nails are not going to be too long and will um, cause any arthritic issues. So you can see how over here where the nails are touching the table that could over time cause the toes to twist which is absolutely what we do not want. Now for dremeling. Um, so we've talked about trimming the nails. For Dremeling, we, um, I use a Dremel 7700. Um, a lot of people have, what are they called? Petty paws? Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at Chris and he's just staring at me with a mask on his face, so that's helpful. But, um, so a lot of people have petty paws at home, um, and they don't have a ton of success with them because they don't really have very much power. So a Dremel is the best way to go. This one, um, I per currently have a diamond head edge on it. That is just an expensive tool that we groomers use to not um, add heat to the nail. You do not have to use that. Um, most people just use the standard sander that comes attached to the Dremel. 
Alrighty, so for Dremeline, most people, if you looked at this, you would assume that you would hold it here. Um, for Dremeline and Dog's Nails, that is not the case. You actually choke all the way up on the Dremel, and you're going to have your thumb out to hold a foot. So the goal here is to have thumb to thumb. This hand is going to be... This hand is going to be holding the pet's foot, and this thumb will be pushing the dog's nail down. Your other hand, dimples, behave. Your other hand, your thumb is going to be resting on top of that thumb as you dremel the nail down. That way it stops any extra vibrations from going through the nail and making this process uncomfortable on the pet. Okay, so let's get started. Again, this hand is holding the foot. This finger is gonna be pushing the nail down. This thumb will be layering on top, and I'm gonna be coming from the underside and pulling it to the top of the foot in smooth movements here and that perfectly takes those sharp edges off of the nail and rounds it down <laughs> dimples isn't used to having this done in slow motion <laughs> But notice how I'm using this thumb to hold that nail down so the whole foot does not vibrate. Easy, Dimples. Dimples is an old lady, so she's not used to having to stand for this long. If your pets at home will let you do this in a laying position, that is awesome. Uh, most pets just don't allow us to do that. Another big thing, if you notice how much dust is coming off of these nails, you don't want to do this if you if you can without wearing a mask, just because that's quite a bit of extra debris to enter your lungs. So we like to wear face masks when doing this procedure. Alrighty, so as you can tell, Dimples is a shedding dog. And I know a lot of people have gone to PetSmart or other pet stores and they've been told to buy one of these, a Ferminator. Now, this is a great tool. This is technically a carding tool. So this is actually something that you would use for dogs who um, get a hand stripped coat or something along those lines. It is okay to use on a shedding dog. However, people push down really hard and actually cause a lot of damage to the pet's skin and we call that brush burn. Um, this tool should never be taken on a pet any, any harder, like don't use any more pressure than you would use on your own inner forearm because it would also be uncomfortable on them. So just really, really light strokes with that would be enough. And only two strokes over each area, that way you don't cause that brush burn. However, if you noticed, just a couple swipes, it doesn't really get a ton of coat from dimples. Um, and people will then, you know, they'll push really hard trying to get more and more. And that's just not, that's just not how it's supposed to work. That's not what's best for this pet. Instead, a rubber brush or a curry brush is actually your best option. Now, these brushes cost about seven or eight dollars. Um, this one is a Kong by Zoom Groom, or Zoom Groom by Kong, and it has a picture of a dog on the outside. You can actually get the one that looks like a cat that is the exact same for usually a dollar cheaper at most of your pet stores. I'm not sure why, but that's just how it is. The brush itself is exactly the same. Now this brush, it does not matter how hard you push. And when you run it across their coat, it gets a ton of undercoat out. And it is much safer. This is safe to use every single day. Um, and is one of the best ways to get rid of all of that excess dander that they build up. Gets all of that undercoat out. Um, it does not pull out any top coat as the Furminator might do if you're using it too roughly. Um, this is just a much better option overall for any of your shedding breeds. What do you think, Dimples? She doesn't care. <laughs> so, yeah, that is a lot of extra coat, sweet girl. So yeah, those were the tips that I have for you guys today. Um, let me know if there are more things you want me to cover next time. I do plan on covering anal glands tomorrow and a number of other things, um, you know, toddlers permitting. So thank you guys for stopping by swag and we'll catch you next time.